In this video, we're going to discuss JSON or JavaScript object notation. This is something that you need to know for the exam. So make sure that you watch this video and that you understand JSON. Okay, so let's start with why. You've probably seen one of these before. Are you a human or a robot? Now, the reason we have captures is because machines struggle with unformatted data. If the data isn't clear, machines will struggle to interpret the data. JSON is a way to format data. It's also a way to send data from one machine to another. We as humans can interpret data quite easily, especially if it's slightly off. So as an example, if you type show version on a Cisco iOS device, so let's say classic iOS, the output will be different to a Cisco iOS XE device, which is different to a Cisco Nexus device. The output will vary slightly. Now that's not a problem for us as humans. We can make adjustments for the slight changes in the output of the data, but machines struggle with that. So we want data that is consistently formatted properly so that machines can communicate properly. As an example, if I SSH to a switch using Python, so I connect to the switch using Python and type show IP route or show version. If I'm not using a JSON format, so the output is not formatted in JSON format or another format such as XML or YAML, it's difficult to write code that can interpret the data properly. Now Cisco once again have made things easier using PyATS. So if you use PyATS rather than say NetMeco to connect directly to a device using a Python script, the output comes back in a format that's easy to interpret using a Python script. But if you're using pure NetMeco or pure Telnet, and you're simply typing show version, and you're trying to pass that output, it's very difficult to write good Python code to pass the output, number one, and secondly, to handle a situation when the output changes. So you upgrade the router as an example, and the output formatting is different. Your Python code will struggle to interpret that. So. For machine-to-machine -machine communication, it makes sense to use standard output, and it makes sense to have a format that's easy to interpret, especially for machines. So to help us with JSON formatting, let's start with a Tesla. Okay, I'm gonna ask you some questions about this Tesla. Well, first question is, who's the manufacturer? That would be Tesla. What type of model is this? Model X. Notice how I've formatted this data. Manufacturer, colon, Tesla. This is known as a key and this is known as a value. So we've got a key value pair. What is the model? It's model X, color, white. Fuel, electric. Miles per gallon, city, 99. Miles per gallon, highway, 93. Now I've simply pulled this information off Google. Hopefully it's correct. But don't get hung up about the data. Look at the format of the data. Again, we have what's called a key separated by a colon, and then we have a value. You need to understand JSON formatting. That's an example of JSON formatting. It actually looks like this. We have to use double inverted commas. So it would be something like first name, colon, then David as an example. So JSON data is written as name value pairs. So going back here, I said key, it could be also referred to as name, so name value pair. Another example is last name and a value. Name value pair consists of a field in double quotes followed by a colon followed by a value. Make sure you understand that format. Now for the exam, there are two JSON data types that you need to know, objects and arrays. Let's start with an object. So a JSON object would look something like this. Notice we've got curly braces. Data is surrounded by curly braces and it's an unordered collection of key value pairs. So here's our key, first name, David, a last name, Bumble. Notice separated by a comma. Make sure that you know the format. So curly braces surrounds the data. We've got key 
value. The keys and values use double quotes, not single quotes. Each key value pair is separated by a comma, except the last one. Trailing commas must not be used. Now it's gonna be easier to look at it in this format, easier to read. Spaces are not important with JSON. So notice the curly braces. First key, first value. Second key, second value, separated by comma, comma. Third key, third value, no comma. So if you put a comma here, that would be a problem. Make sure once again that you recognize this format for the exam. So just to summarize, a JSON object is an unordered collection of key value pairs. In other words, this is not ordered. It could be in any order, it doesn't matter. Surrounded by curly braces once again. Key and value pairs are separated by a colon. Spaces don't matter. But make sure that the last one doesn't have a comma. Use double quotes, not single quotes. Now it's all very good and well me showing you this stuff with PowerPoint, but let me show you this practically. You'll be able to download this PowerPoint presentation so that you have access to the details. But I wanna show you this practically because it's gonna be a lot easier to demonstrate this on a live Cisco device rather than just showing you the stuff with PowerPoint. Now the great thing is that DevNet have a Nexus always on sandbox. You can simply SSH to the sandbox and you'll be able to try commands, which I'm gonna show you right now. Now on a Mac, I'm gonna use this command, but on Windows, you could use PuTTY as an example to connect. Okay, so I'm going to copy this, open up a terminal, I'll make this big to make sure that it's clear. And I'm going to paste that command in. So basically, I'm SSHing to port 8181 using this username, and this is the DNS name of the router. I have to put my password in, which is admin underscore one, two, three, four, exclamation mark or bang if you prefer. So there's the password, there's the username, this is the port, this is the protocol we need to use, and this is the domain name. Okay, it's complaining about my password, let's try that again. Okay, so I've successfully logged in to this Nexus box hosted by Cisco DevNet. Cisco DevNet have made things so much easier because you can practice this stuff, you can try things using their free labs. Now on a Windows computer, you could use PuTTY and SSH to port 8181, so SSH. Host name is SBX, NXOS, management.cisco.com. And I can click open. You have to accept the public key, so I'm gonna say yes. Login as admin admin underscore one, two, three, four, exclamation mark or bang. And there you go, I've logged in. So show version, this command shows me that this is a Nexus device. We can see various information about the device. We can see it's a 9000 V chassis as an example. So I'm gonna jump back to my Mac and do this on my Mac. Show version on the Mac will show the same kind of information. Now we can use standard commands like show interface VLAN 100. And that shows us standard information like we would get on any other type of device. So we can see as an example, demo, please don't touch IP addresses this. But what we could do is we can send that to JSON. So let's just use JSON and we get to the JSON information like that, but it's not very easy to read, so let's use JSON pretty. So JSON pretty, there's our information. So show interface VLAN 100, we see the JSON formatting. Notice the curly braces. We've got information about this interface, VLAN 100. Important to note, key, value, separated by a colon, then a comma, 
key value. Again, comma at the end, double inverted commas. Very important, the last entry doesn't have a comma at the end. Data is contained within curly braces. So this data has these curly braces. Table interface has these curly braces. And then we've got the all encompassing curly braces. So that's an example practically of JSON formatting versus show interface VLAN 100, standard command. This is a format that we as humans would understand, but this is a format that a machine will understand much better. So just remember, we wanna have standard formatting for machines. As an example, show IP interface brief here gives us a list of interfaces on the device. That's human readable format. But if we say JSON pretty, this gives us the information in JSON formatting. Show IP interface brief pipe JSON pretty. Notice there's a big difference here. We have the square brackets. So row interface, square bracket, scrolling down. Now the link may be quite slow here. My internet connection to the DevNet site is quite slow, but notice here is the next square bracket. Here we've got data within curly braces. Again, notice no comma at the end here, but this has curly braces and a comma at the end. The data within here is key value comma. Now, the reason why we have square brackets is because we are using what's called an array. In this slide, I've kind of summarized it. Notice the curly braces. Here we've got square brackets, and inside here we've got an ordered list of values. The reason why we want this is because we've got multiple interfaces. So we've got interface VLAN 100, and then here we've got interface VLAN 200, and information about those interfaces. So rather than just showing information about one interface, so a single object, we've now got an array of interfaces that we're looking at. So an array in JSON is an ordered list of values, uses square brackets. It can store all kinds of data. So it could store things such as strings. A string is like a sentence, hello, or a word, hello. Whereas a number is something like one or two or 2.123. Values must be separated by commas once again. So notice once again that an object doesn't have those square brackets. This is the output for show version, JSON pretty. Important here, comma, comma, no comma. We've got the key value pair separated by a colon. Make sure that you know this formatting. I've said that enough times now, I think. So here's an example, once again, of show interface VLAN 100. Again, you can download this PowerPoint slide so that you have all this information. I've given you a few examples of that. But again, it's much easier to see this practically. And I'm gonna take this to the next level now by showing you how to run Python on this Nexus box and do stuff in Python. And then I'm gonna show you how to access the box remotely using a Python script that I'm gonna run on my local computer and then pull out similar JSON information. Let's go.